Good evening, truck and tractor pool fans. We're here. We made it. <laughs> and uh it's been a long day. But anyway, uh, how's Dwayne tonight, buddy? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Still riding on the high. Still riding on the high. And Still we'll learn about that later. We'll we'll learn about <laughs> no that idea. later, I'm sure. Uh well, Kendra. Even Kendra's here two weeks, about two yeah. or three weeks in a row now. Yeah. Too. Yeah, man. I'm here. I'm almost caught up on sleep from last weekend. Uh, <laughs> but no, it was last a good week. weekend. Yeah. Tonight's show, really, we're just we're going to cover uh, the results uh, from the Keystone Nationals, um, starting with Thursday night, obviously. I did not attend, unfortunately. So uh, we'll rely on the other two here to uh, <laughs> fill in the gaps in there. Any exciting news from a particular class or whatever so uh it sounded like it was a successful event uh live stream etc so it was any any way to uh see the event whether you were there or at home <clears throat> excuse me so uh, but unfortunately for me family kept me busy and i was unable to do anything so with that said we're gonna we're gonna get there's a lot of stuff to read here and we don't want to bore you so please uh like subscribe share hit that thumbs up it helps Kendra, Club Kendra. So, <laughs> by the way, you got to change your name down instead of Kendra B. You got to go Club Kendra. I there do. I really should do that. Yeah. With a K, Club Kendra. Yeah. You know, so. so, I I yeah. asked around this weekend, do you think mm -hmm. I should change my name back to my real name so everybody knows who I am? And everybody <laughs> said, everybody said, most certainly not. Leave it. Yeah. yeah I said, well, I guess it'll stick now. Be creative. <laughs> Be creative. <The> chat, <laughs> chat's already getting busy over here, so. But uh, we're going to go ahead and. Uh... Good evening, everyone. Larry K. Chris Smith, Hot Wheels collector, the man. What up, Jacob? How are you? And. Uh, Robert, Robert Hortlip, the beast. <laughs> Robert Hortlip. Hey, by the way, thanks for hanging up on me, Robert. Appreciate that. <laughs> I can understand if I was fussing at you or something. I'm <laughs> just kidding. He, we got disconnected and he didn't call back. I guess he was done his rant, so no, I'm just kidding. You, but, remember, uh, <laughs> you, you remember he lives in that central PA area called BFE yeah. that has spotty phone service. <laughs> yeah, right. So, But anyway, yeah, let's get started. We're going to let Kendra kick it off here. and uh, Yeah, that's fine, Robert. Yeah, I Actually, I had two or, two or three other people call me after I lost phone contact with you. Pretty busy night that night. Um, we'll let Kendra take off, then Dwayne's going to take over after her, and then I'll fill up in the third position. We'll just keep going round about like that. And here we go, kicking it off. Uh, 11,000 Hot Farm, Kendra. Yep. Thursday night. Um, I was not there on Thursday night, so I can't really provide any feedback other than I was watching the live stream. <laughs> so uh, I, can put a, I, can, I can put a little bit into it from the beginning. The track was fresh. Had plenty of water in it. it was a little bit tight and it uh, got lumpy. Yep. It wasn't it wasn't behaving well and the tractors were having a tough time making it as far down the track as they should have because they were uh, getting uh, whooped by the track. Yeah. Okay. So and and I heard that later on we'll go through this when we get down to the uh, to the the light limited class. Apparently, there was a lot of people who did not have enough gear for that track. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, that's what kind of was the demise. But, hey, that's pulling. So, um, anyway, we'll get started here. The 11,000-pound hot farm, 10 tractors on hand. Uh, taking the lead, and not to give anything away, but he had a wonderful weekend. Swept the weekend. Best of show. Really good weekend here for Kenny Bauer. Uh, or I'm sorry, Balker. He corrected me that for the drive reduction. <laughs> Kenny Balker. Yep. G H. G H is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rip and Red 240.08 with the win. Mark Lawson was second with 235.01. Tommy Eppert uh, with the Snort and Horse at 234.26. And rounding out the four in the finals was Kenny Sandridge with Old Herman going 230.30. Donnie Gokenauer was fifth place with Working Man Blues at 228.19. Sixth place went to Austin Stoner with Salvaged After Hours going 222.35. Seventh place was Josh Knight going 211.83. Eighth place, uh, brand new tractor, brand new driver, uh, first time indoors, Kendra Henry with the Blue Maverick, 201.92. Ninth place, Jared Stevens with Checkmate at 159.05. 
And unfortunately, with some breakage, rounding out the top or rounding out the 10 track years was Jared Stoner with salvage this too at 5706. Dwayne, 78 Yo. modified. Yep. Uh, first flight of 7,800 modified uh, in first place was Rick Blizzard with barely affordable at 250.19. Uh, uh, second place was Ian Ericker with Unstable at a 248.00. Third was Casey Wolf with One Too Many at 246.79. Fourth was Jason Weichel with Untamed and uh, he had 241.62. Fifth, Andy Forrester with Nonsense at 240.30. And sixth, Brian Harnett, Stubborn Mule at 210.83. And we had one scratch, which was uh, Mike Stroman feeling froggy extreme. That rounds out Ooh, the scratch. first flight. Yeah, uh, I did get to talk to Mike. He spent some time with us there at the registration trailer Friday, no, Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Um, that tractor was on hand. They fired it up outside, and he said something just was not right. Um, wasn't really sure what was happening, but he did not want to risk it um, pulling it this weekend. Yeah, so sense, yeah. tractor was on the grounds, just unfortunately did not make it mm. inside. Okay. Okay. Next up, the 10,000 Pro Farm Flight 1. Uh, taking a win. Wow. Defending champion Kendall Weaver with the Virginian. 246.68. Uh, second place was Chris Pangle Jr. with All Hooked Up. That is the old uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff, Jeff, yeah, the high cotton. That's it. Uh, 235.03. I'm gonna forget trying to name previous others. <laughs> I'm having a lot, it's been a long day. Third was Cody Smith with Hillside Deer at 230.55. Fourth was Shandy Turner with Foolish Fun at 223.46. Fifth was Nick Morrison with Toxic at wow. Maybe yep. you should play the number two in the lottery. 222.22. <laughs> and uh, sixth place was uh, one of the Millers, Tim or Ryan. I'm not sure who was present to drive. I think Tim pulled. Okay. If With I remember Yon which if I remember which one is which, I'm pretty sure it was Tim that ran. Okay. And that's the Amish Ingenuity Ford at 207.64. And scratching from the class was Dave Darty with Buzzer Bait, the Oliver. So I'm not sure what was going on. I have with that. no idea. I didn't hear anything about yeah, that either. He, maybe, he uh, made one attempt. And, okay. Well, I don't know if he if he officially made an attempt. He was on the starting line. I don't know if he went to go, but they they had the hood up and were working. But I just don't think they made it. Gotcha. They ran out of time. The clock was against them. Gotcha. Okay, Kendra, you're up next at the 6200 modified four by four trucks. Flight number one. Yes, uh, this class, um, I lied. I did not watch this class. I am not a truck person. I apologize to everybody. <laughs> at, least, at least you're honest. Uh, Nobody this, will argue this, with this, that. Okay. This is when I ate dinner and got a shower and stuff like that. So, <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a good class. So the, the, yeah. the, the, it seemed like they were having the nice long hooks with us in here. Obviously, yeah, at 248, so. it's almost in the mm -hmm. sand pile. Yeah. So taking the win with authority. We'll, we'll give him the with authority here. Eddie Zedrick with the Thunderbolt going 248.58. Second place was Graham Young with the Renegade going 235.81. Third place was Dean Hitchcock with Grounds for Divorce going 235.26. Fourth place was Chad Lamb with the Virginia Outlaw going 234.55. Fifth place, Troy Nails with the Kill in Time at 233.68. Sixth place, R.B. Moeller with To the Extreme at 228.24. Seventh place was Doug Arruda with Amateur Night going 224.77. Eighth place was Tony Fratarelli with All Started Here at 222.59. Ninth place was Michael Adair with In the Game going 221.33. Tenth place, Mark Serafin with One Potent Rodent going 216.35. 11th place was Alan Mattinson with Overkill going 209.82. <laughs> and rounding out the class was Samuel Bell with Our Inheritance going 156.33. I just wonder how long it's going to take you to see that message. I did. <clears throat> I did. <laughs> okay. Scooter buddy. Um, yeah. coming, up, coming up next, we have the 7700 Light Limited Turbo Flight 1. 
Uh, looks to me like, all right. Bradley Wassler, Whistling Red was the number one at 248.94. Second place was Dayton Custer, uh, uh, driving Operation Blue at 247.30. Third was Ben Flaherty uh, with Smoking Red uh, at 240.05. At number four was Adam Ritchie with Paps Blue Ribbon, 233.17. Fifth was Dave Simcock driving Lucifer with a 231.44. Sixth was Mike Runkel driving Old Smokey with a 203.99. Seventh was Ricky Tavener driving Red Tornado with a 127.40. Eighth was Kevin Grubb uh, on Lone Ranger with a 156.73. And ninth was Mark Smith. With a 139.79, why did Mark Smith have a 179.39? Um, <laughs> oh, should I just keep going? I'm sorry. Poor gear Ke selection. <laughs> yeah, somebody accidentally got one gear too low. Way, way too low. Um, yeah. I guess the the gear shift transmission is set up differently than on his light pro. And yeah, he 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 pulled in a pit gear, so. <laughs> mm. And he got to redeem himself, though. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Tenth was Sue Johnson on Iron Maiden with a 138.77. Eleventh, Jason Bowers with a 104.86. And twelfth, Michael Thomas driving stealing time with a 72.14. And we had a scratch, uh, Perrin, Perrin Bean, all about that Alice. So that's uh, the 7700 light limited. Okay. Coming in as an invitational only class, the 10,000 pound <clears throat> hot stock tractors. And uh, why am I seeing over in the status DQ finals? Well, I'm not sure why that showed up. A couple uh, of them. Um, it wasn't because, that uh, night. Yeah. Because uh, he oh, DQ'd in the finals. He did. Oh. He, uh, so I guess I it just stuck with his name. As far gotcha. as, uh, from what I understood, he crossed the line and got disqualified. I think that's that's what I yeah. heard anyway. Well, dag nabbit. Okay. There, was, you, there was definitely some uh, <clears throat> some white chalk flying when he went up the track. Okay. And if I understood right, if he wouldn't have DQ'd, he would have probably had it. Yeah. So that's what, yeah. Mm. Taking the win Thursday night. Brad Kramer with the fence road deer at 253.33. Second was Chad Nuzzlerot with the Recap This International at 252.35. Third was Dustin Reynolds with Pulling Teeth, another international, at 249.28. Fourth, John Foreman, if it's always something, a John Deere at 247.73. Fifth was Dennis Boop with the Black Stripe Addiction, with an interesting weekend for him. Uh, again, that's a Black Stripe Addiction, if I got to tell you that's an international. Come on. That's uh, 246.96. Six was Bob Martin with the Boss Hog Binder. Love the name. Love the Boss Hog Binder name. Uh, 246.26. Seventh was Brian McConnell with Milkman's Mojo at 243.06. Uh, eighth was Matt Houck with O Red at 242 and 97. Ninth was Dave Alder with Red Power Reloaded at 237.50. Tenth was Corey. Pirog with the getting lucky at 237.11. 11th, Thurman Mumford, past champion, uh, with the mechanical bull at 234.39. And rounding out the class was Austin Martin in 12th with double take 224.89. And we are headed to Friday night. Any other information yeah. there? Um, the, the hot stock class actually had all had decent runs. It looked like a it, it, everything I was sitting in the stands, everything looked legit. And obviously there's a couple of uh, different pullers from different areas pulling against each other. And I had my money on uh, Dennis getting first place, but it didn't happen. <laughs> he was the defending champion, by the way. So, yeah. Okay. We're moving on to Friday, March 15th at 12 noon. This was the mini madness mm -hmm. that morning. So, uh, and from believe... what I heard, it ran very well. Yes. Um, I, they were done quick. I think they were done within like two and a half, three hours, which is exactly what, what you want to see for five classes here. Yeah. Um, wow. yeah, as far as I heard, everybody was happy. Everything went well. So good job. Uh, great idea by the committee. Give these guys their own show. Mm -hmm. 
um, helps the big show run a lot faster and gives them their, their light to shine there. Uh, so we will start here with the 1900, I almost said 19,000 pound, 1900 pound small block mini flight. Number one, taking the win was Bud Casale with <clears throat> bumper going 251.17. Second place was Brooke Vander Velden with the adrenaline addiction. They got a thing for what's that called? Alliteration or whatever. You have the matching front first letters. 23706 <laughs> was her distance. Joseph Willis took third with Flasher at 235.95. Fourth place was Steve Naif with the stall duster going 232.90. Fifth place was Justin Freet with the Rattler at 227 even. Sixth place was James Mathis with Fortified at 207.22. Seventh place was Jerry Welch with the Bandit at 187.68. Eighth place was Zachary Knight with the most hated final chapter at 170.44. And rounding out the top or rounding out the class of nine was Robbie O'Donnell with Hilltop Hot Rods going 126.55. And looks like we did have a scratch of Garrett Watts with the Royal Mess. All right. Up next was the first flight of the 2050 Big Block Minis. Um, in first place, we had Milton Westgate driving Mean Streak uh, with a distance of uh, 256.47. Second was Jeff Paulding with, uh, driving the wonky, wonky Donkey. Yeah. At 252.86. Third was Bus Bud Casale. Uh, driving Wild Child with a 237.81. Fourth was Stephen O'Brien on Goliath with a 233.80. Fifth, Scott LaVenture on Out of Control with a 219.82. And it looks like we had two scratches uh, Billy D. Moore with Sleeping Henry and Rob Wise on Long Shot. Wow. So that is it. Okay, flight two for the 1900. Small block modified minis uh, taking the win. Dave Kilby, David Kilby with the paycheck hooker at 238.10. Second was Trent Vandervelden with the adrenaline addiction two at 230.81. Third, John Sutton with bear tracks at 219.77. Those three went to the finals. Uh, fourth was Jack Brink with Nellet at 207.69. Fifth, Terry Hefferfinger with the, I'd say that right? Well, finger, yeah. The wild one at 207.19. Six was Leroy Durf with Wildfire, 206.89. Six nine, I'm sorry, 206.69. Uh, seventh was uh, Joseph Jones with Spinning and Grinning at 165.36. Eighth was Anthony Ebner with Freedom Isn't Free at 90.95. And running out the class, Wesley Williamson in ninth with the Adrenaline at 54.49. Something major must have happened there. He is usually a top runner there. Yes, absolutely. We usually say his name a lot near the top for interstate. All right. Next, we went into the flight two of the 2050 Big Block Mini Class. Seven of them on hand with one scratch, Mike Gray with Hillbilly Shaker. Taking the win was Stephen Queen with Sniper at 266.37. Second place went to Heather Sutton with Polar Bear Express going 253.92. Good weekend for the Suttons there. Third place went to Pete Yarrington with Copperhead at 240.87. Fourth place went to Gary Butler with Never Satisfied 2.0 at 234.96. Fifth place went to Gary Butler Jr. with the Blown Dollars and Cents going 229.14. Sixth place went to John Graham with the Sabotage at 227.54. And rounding out the class was Stephen Brickman with Still Can't Get It Right. At 175.68. Good deal. Uh, up next was the flight three of the 1900 small block minis. Uh, in first place was Bruce Robinson driving straight shooter with a 234.09. Second place was Matt Weishar. Um, Weisher. Weisher. Okay. <laughs> Driving Dirt Demon on a two twenty one with a two twenty one ninety nine. Uh, third was Trent Vandervelden with Adrenaline Addiction one. Uh, his distance was two twenty one twenty. Hi April. Fourth, fourth was uh, Jackie Graham uh, on Adjusted Joker with a two twenty four uh, sixty four. Fifth was Larry Baden 
uh, on Bottle Baby with the 212.95 sixth. Adam Brown on Oliver Express uh, with the 212.33 seventh. James Morris uh, on a tractor called Wild Thang with the 195.81 eighth. Was Michael Perry Jr. on Little Reaper with a 194.03 ninth. Was Michael uh, Despanet. Uh, driving Purple Rain with a 186.54, and in 10th place was Charlie Pickering on the Outlaw with a 145.08. And that rounds out the third flight of minis, small block minis. Okay. We're moving to Friday evening at 5.30 p.m., <laughs> Friday, March 15th, and the show kicked off with the 9,300-pound Super Farm tractors. <clears throat> Go. Taking a win was defending champion Frank Payne with Pure Luck at 249.32. Second, Matt Conrad with Haywire at 248.38. Third was Shane McFarland with the Rutten Buck at 246.27. And I'm showing only three to the finals there? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fourth was uh, Scott Chris with Just for Fun at 244.69. Fifth, Dan Park with the Saturday Night Hooker at 242. 0.846 was Travis Chris with no expectations. 241.42. Seventh was Brad McFarlane with the untamed John Deere at 241.11. And we have a scratch for the dear friend of uh, unfortunately deceased Tim Puglisi. And DQ, Michael Austin with the American. Yep. And then we went into the finals of the 2050. Uh, well, I'll touch on the, because we, we had a lot of questions about this um, this weekend with, you know, how, how was it decided three, four, five, two to the finals. Um, and the Keystone Committee decided that because of last year with the finals running so long to keep everything fair and all of that, it was basically a matrix system. If your class had X number of vehicles in it, this many went to the finals. Um, it was it was truly the only way to keep it fair. That's why some classes, like if there was two flights, only two went or three went. Um, yeah. And it it basic and that's what they had to do. It sucks, you know. Somebody has to be the bad guy, but you know it's it's just kind of how the Keystone Committee decided to to roll with it, and it worked out well. Um, so anyway, I and what time was the finals over with this year? The last distance was read at 11.59 p.m. Yeah. Not three, not 2.59 a.m. No. We didn't the, know what the, to do after it was over. We weren't sure if we should go home or just stand around and talk for a while. Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do. Um, yeah, old. I was – obviously, you know, we had to stay, help clean up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I was I was back at the hotel at 1.30 in the morning, and that was registration trailer completely packed up. That's um, sponsor fantastic. banners were basically down. Right. It was it was pretty it was a pretty good night. We were pretty happy with it. Yeah. Um, anyway, Perfect. so 2050 Big Block Mini Finals were the second class on Friday evening. Uh, Pete Yarrington with the Copperhead took the win at 263.17. I believe he. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I believe he is defending. Possibly. I, I don't know. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's won a couple different times. I'm pretty sure he's defending champion. Uh, Stephen Queen was second with Sniper at 261.68. Third place was Heather Sutton with Polar Bear Express at 257.63. Fourth place was Jeff Paulding with the Wonky Donkey at 249.19. And rounding out. Uh, the class uh, was Milton Westgate with the Mean Street going 184.67. Good deal. Um, I'm thinking of Gold one. Dust. Gold Dust was the defending champion. I'm sorry, mm. Dwayne. Go ahead. That's fine. Um, up next, we had the 8500 Light Pro Stock. Um, in first place was Jeff Michelucci on Demented with a 260.38. Uh, that resulted in a bent weight bar on the front from slamming the sand pile that that has surprisingly caused quite a bit of drama on facebook and why is that uh because people are questioning the builder's integrity with a bent weight bracket uh i checked haters it haters gonna hate is all i've got to say <laughs> i checked it i i looked at it up close and everything was legit in my book mm-hmm 
Everybody can say it if they bend, want to. Yeah. So basically, basically, he has a component tractor with weight bars bolted on the side. He has them made out of stainless steel, mm -hmm. and that's it, it's not uh, it's it's not made to take a hit. That's for sure. Anyway, uh, in second place was Matt Smith. Tractor. Huh? Well, I shouldn't say component tractor. The oh. way the sheet metal's done, the outside, the the, yeah. the accessories on I the know outside are bolted on instead of going oh. the whole way through. I know what you meant. That's but... not really, yeah. I better watch what I say or I'll get hammered <laughs> on here. Uh, in, sec <laughs> uh, in second place was Matt Smith with Fast Forward, uh, on Fast Forward with a 256, uh, 5856. And uh, those tractors were parked right across from where we were at in the pits, and they all had sand piles on the floor. Or uh, at least the, mm -hmm. I think the, at least the top two, if not the top three, did. Uh, third place was Mark Smith on Faster Forward with a 256.77. Fourth place, uh, Matt Dirksen uh, uh, driving on Chain with a 256.25. I got to meet Matt for the first time. Uh, he's a Canadian, and I'm telling you, some of the most awesome people you ever want to meet. Had a, had a conversation that lasted long enough until Matt said, hey, we got to go get our stuff done. Can you just stop talking? <laughs> Uh, on, in fifth was Cody Ut on the Storm with a 255.40. In sixth, Kevin Ut on Rolling Thunder with a 252.29. And seventh, uh, Colton Zundell on Steel City Smoker with a 250.85. Eighth was Mike Weakland with Just Hooking Up with a 247.28. In ninth, Adam Diaz on Whiskey Business with a 243.43. In tenth, Jared Morris driving Dad's Dream in Blue with a 226.26. And 11th was Shane Scott on Black and Blue with a 109.55. And we had a scratch, which was Chris Mann on Midnight Farmer. There's the answer to you. Oh, part. more. There was a Justin Martin and a Chris Comaroni that are not, weren't there either. Or right. running, yes. Yep. Yeah. Comment there for you, Dwayne. Bottom nope. of the screen. Weight bar goes all the way through, and it's a little uh, okay. Uh, the way it looked to me, it was bolted on, and I was standing right at the tractor. But I'm not going to argue because maybe the bar went the whole way through. That that's Jeff's <clears> son-in-law. <throat> he knows. <laughs> all right, good deal. Well, of course, Chris Baker. Of course, Chris Baker. You're biased. I don't know. <laughs> I would kidding. argue that the I'm mod turbo finals. Oh, was the there's more the there's more unbiased opinion okay I'm just, no i'm just <laughs> saying every single tractor had a stellar pass in the mod turbo class final mm -hmm. and you they had didn't. well we'll get to it here but I, I i know that i am biased to the mod turbos but that class those eight tractors were the most competitive of every class out of the weekend and results don't lie <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It to be bolted, right? Yeah. Dwayne. Okay. Yep. Can That's I go good. now? I'm yes, glad for the, I'm glad for the correction. I mean, I only go with what I see, and I wasn't trying to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> wasn't trying to judge or anything. Sixty-two hundred pound my five four by four trucks fight too. I cut him off. I was yeah. I was going to say I'm something just else. With you. The tractor next. The tractor next door had uh, had uh, fiberglass weights sitting there. So it's not all what it seems, right? Sorry, I just got a Snapchat from a mod turbo puller who was clearly pulling, but or is clearly working in the shop and listening to us. Right, and all right. I'm going to say is, I said every tractor who made a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Better change your words there. <laughs> your opinion, but not that I said that, and he didn't make wow. it to the finals. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Again, modified four by four flight number two taking the win. What a weekend he had. Justin Grace with just in time at two fifty point four nine. Second was Will Hitchcock with the home record two forty six and twenty eight. Third R B Muller with Black Sheep. That is a new truck in the Muller camp. Uh, new truck for the Muller camp um, this year two forty two point oh five. Uh, fourth was Wayne Tapps got the second with Tasmanian Terror 2 at 240.01. Fifth, Greg Hitchcock on shaky ground. That truck debuted at last year's Keystone Nationals. 
two thirty nine point three seven. Six was Greg Smothers, or I'm sorry, Greg Smothers, Aaron Smothers, <laughs> with the uh, money haul. Get, get out of here. Oops. Two thirty seven point seven seven. Seventh was Seth Madison. There, I said it, Madison. I didn't correct anybody. I may be wrong too. Antagonizer at two thirty three point two three. Eighth was Dennis Grove with the Mountain Mule at 232.06. Ninth was one of the Molar ladies, as in Caitlin or Casey, daughters. Uh, Molar Farms Chevrolet at 230.46. Tenth was uh, Wayne Tapscott Sr. with High Anxiety at 228.02. Eleventh, Michelle Abshire with Split Decision, 224.40. And twelfth, Richard Gardner Jr. with Untamed Aggression at 216. Point one one. Kevin Apsar with Gone Awol was a scratch. So, another big class of trucks. Here comes did the dual fuel. Did you notice that I didn't try to say anything when you were asking if you said the name right? <laughs> <laughs> then we went into the 8,000 pound super stock dual fuel class. Um, Definitely, we, we definitely probably had the sled set a little too tight on these guys. We definitely had a lot of fire during this class. Um, fans like to see it, though. So as much as we hate to see it for the yep. pullers, yep. Uh, definitely had quite a bit of fire and flair in this class. Um, taking the win was Lance Mysick with High Hopes with 228.16. Second place, one of the fancy fires we had, Mark Bradish with the M80. Going 227.25. Uh, hated to see it. Uh, that tractor took in a lot of fire extinguisher smoke. Uh, he was unable to come back for the finals. Uh, then we went to Henry Everman with Force Decision going 218.38. Fourth place again was Henry with Final Decision at 217.15. Fifth place was David Everman with Overruled going 212.27. Um, sixth place was Kevin Windsor with the six shooter. Um, pretty cool to see him there that weekend. Uh, as many of you know, that is where he grenaded his engine, puked the engine, whatever you want to call it last year. Uh, first time back on the track. Pretty cool to see him make the finals. Um, and we'll go over that when we get there. Uh, 211.55 was his run. Seventh was Bert Stainard with determination going 209.81. Eighth place, Tommy Bedger, again with Fireworks, the Patriot, 205.78. Ninth place was Tom Ermson with the Eyesore 2 going 20.68. Um, unfortunately, Corey and Cole, uh, Cole actually did make it back. It was great to see him. Always love getting to see my buddy Cole with Airborne. Um, they had some fuel issues and were unable to make a pass. Uh, Darren Olden and Burt Stannard with the Determination 3 and Kryptonite. Uh, also were scratches for the weekend. Um, I talked with Cole and he said that his last stage of fuel didn't want to come mm -hmm. in. It wasn't uh, something else that I seen this uh, at this hook. I think it was Tom Bedgar had something come apart in his fuel system. Yeah. In his run. It was, it was definitely fuel <clears throat> and fuel you could, fire. Yeah. <laughs> you could see the fuel. You could see the fuel spray out the front of the tractor and the fire just followed it. So the fuel sprayed and then all the fire came out. The only comment I have is that there was an EMS dude standing at the gate at the door with a fire extinguisher. And I'm telling you, I just wanted to run down there and scream at him. He was spraying the, AB, uh, the ABC chemical like six feet before he got there. He had the fire extinguisher just charging before he even got to the tractor. And I was like, uh, I don't think that uh, you should have a fire extinguisher. But anyway beside the point got okay. me a little bit aggravated we were de we determined he should have been the backup to the backup with the fire because <laughs> i think we we think he sprayed more people than he did the fire but hey thank you for being there we appreciate the fire and the ems personnel uh, uh yeah i understand i understand but uh yeah all right up next we had the 1900 small block minis final and <laughs> In first place, the champion of 2024, John Sutton, driving bear tracks with a 262.39. No surprise there. Say, Good running I would, tractor. I would say that took him uh, pretty close to the sand pile in a mini. Uh, number two, 
uh, num- uh, in second place was Bud Casale. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. I I don't know. On Thumper with a two fifty uh, two fifty three six six, uh, and third was David Kilby. Uh, a driving paycheck hooker with a 253 65 in fourth was Bruce Robinson driving straight shooter with a 248 91 in fifth Trent Vandervelden driving adrenaline addiction one with a 247 58 sixth uh, Jackie Graham on adjusted joker with a 245 17 seventh Steve Naif Naf on Saul Duster with a 239.08. Eighth was Brooke Vandervelden on Adrenaline Addiction 3 with a 238.40. Ninth was Joseph Wills on Flasher with a 237.34. Tenth, Matt Weishar uh, driving Dirt Demon with a 235.43. And in 11th, Trent Vander- Vandervelden with Adrenaline Addiction 2 with a 232.80. There was 11 in the finals there. Ooh, I get my turbo flight one. Look at that. Yes, Chris Baker. In a perfect world, I agree. Uh, okay, I'll shut <clears throat> off those comments. I'm not trying to be evil towards you. <laughs> <laughs> They're always looking for help, Chris. You're welcome to hop in the vehicle and come on down and give us a hand. How's that? <laughs> but yes, I agree. Okay, flight one for 8,500-pound mod turbo. Joe Miller took the win with Smoking Joe, the John Deere, at 252.33. Second was uh, Jason Malott, otherwise known as Yankee, with Dr. LZ at 247.89. Third was Ray Belak with Raging Red at 246.76 mod turbo. <laughs> uh, fourth was DJ Boop with How on the Hog making the finals at 245.28. Fifth was committee member... Founding young man, whatever you want to say. Jason Forrester is Papa Smurf, 244.93. Six was uh, Todd Curtis at 244.02. Seventh, Chris Pangle with Blue Line at 214.57. Eighth was Aaron Everhart with the hammer down at 205.40. Ninth was Kayla Graham with Billet Blue at 2.99. John Foreman, Darren Olden. I'm sorry, let's do it this way. John Foreman with It's Something. It's a new vehicle for him. Darren Olden with the Hulk Smash and Jason Malott with Double OZ. All were scratches. Kendra, you want to fill us in? Or? Um, well, we know why John Foreman wasn't there. Uh, he told us he didn't have it ready. Um, Darren did not have time. Um, obviously, as a committee right. member, he has a lot of other obligations. Yep. I think they said he got the engine back like on Monday and just didn't mm-hmm. have time. Um, and Double <clears throat> Z was a scratch for Friday night. However, Yankee left after pulling Dr. LZ, went up, they got it together, and it came down on Saturday. <laughs> so, yeah. I was going to so say, we, they so were part tuned for Saturday noon, and it'll be in the results. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> they were parked right next to us, and he had three tractors in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Yep, they all made it down, one on Friday, two on Saturday. Uh, Vern did not sleep, I don't think, at all on <laughs> last yeah. week. Um, but kudos to him. Um, everybody knows he did not have a great year last year uh, with engine failures. <laughs> Let's putting it lately. Uh, he pretty much <laughs> stripped all three tractors down to bare bones. Undid wiring off the frame, um, everything. Gave everything a really good check over. Uh, so I expect to see some good things from him this coming up point season. Good. That's a good deal. So now we're going to jump to Saturday noon, uh, the 10,000-pound Pro Farm Flight 2. Uh, taking the win with authority was Mr. Ivan Hessong with the Limestone Binder. Uh, Ivan has probably one of the worst jobs at Keystone. He is in charge <laughs> of the smoke tube and, <laughs> and finding smoke tube help. So that man deserved a good run because <laughs> I would not want that job to be in charge of pulling the smoke tube back and dealing with the smoke tube help and all that. Well, the best helper they had this weekend was that little New Holland tractor to pull the yeah. smoke tube back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> While we're on the smoke tube, uh, kudos to the Terminator sled guys. Uh, all new tubing this year, and it held together very well. 
Um, as far as I know, there was no breaks. I know that they had to kind of do some repairs between classes, uh, but there was no smoke tube hold up uh, this entire Keystone Nationals. So good job to Darren Allison and the crew there. Uh, second place went to another volunteer there, uh, Mark Culbertson with Stitch at 233.86. Third place was Anthony Hamrick with Beefy at 226.96. Fourth place went to Brian Morrison, old thumbs up guy, yeah. <laughs> with the Shed Shaker at 225.66. Fifth place went to Chris Pangle on his Ford, I believe it's a 9,000 or 9,600, whatever. Uh, 221.61. Sixth place, Kendall Weaver with the boss, uh, 215.08. Poor Kendall, he worked all night on that tractor. Um, they left Friday night, and I don't think he slept at all before he got on the seat to go pulling. Uh, seventh place was Bob Scheip with Old Blue at 189.66. And not sure why, but Wes Dellinger with the sheer pin was a scratch. I don't have a story for that one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, up next was the 4,500 small block four by four trucks. And in first place was Austin Stoner with Analyze This with a 250 98. In second place was Derek Dice driving Mopar Magic 2 with a 241 92. In third place, am I going to say this right, JR? <laughs> Tyler Shives. Yep. Got there's it. no there's no r <laughs> it, it's not misspelled this time it wasn't the uh, uh, yeah driving. yeah 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 here we go it was misspelled here we go <laughs> hold on i i printed the papers out i got it on paper <laughs> okay. uh driving bootlegger with a 241.82 in fourth place was ryan varner on mountain maniac with a 239.93 fifth place was denny stoner driving making tracks with a 239.62 in six, Travi, tra, uh, I'm going to have a tongue twister here. Travis Yitzi. It, 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 I can't say it. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Where are we at, Travis? Damn, dri dri driving stomper with the 239.33. <laughs> Travis, Seven. let's see. It's real simple. Let's, let's see. see. I had trouble with it the first couple times, too. <laughs> Christopher Utsi with a, uh, let's see, with a one bad, uh, driving one bad bow tie with a 237.60 and eighth. Uh, Dave, sh sh uh, not again, Shives, uh, Shives uh, <laughs> driving alcohol abuse uh, with a 237.51 and ninth, Jared Stoner driving silverback with a 235.25 and 10th, Chris Hulian with, uh, on, uh, with a truck named Stretch with a 213.93 and 11th, Pat Stillman uh, driving playing games with a 187.18. 11 trucks in that class. Look what I got again, Kendra. My Turbo Flight 2. That's fine. <laughs> Usually I've always let her read them. Uh, taking the win, Scott Kiskaden with the Bleeding Blue at 258. Yeah, 0.28. Good job, Scotty. Second, Guy Gokenauer with the Stress Test at 257.77. Another committee member right from the get-go. Uh, third, Steve Beckley with the Up and Smoke John Deere 257.36. And I hear that tractor ran incredibly well after being down mm -hmm. for quite some time. Uh, fourth, John Lilly with the Extreme Pleasure Case at 256.24. Fifth was Nathan Graham with the Blue Reaper at 254.92. Sixth, Aaron Bradish with the Recycled Red at uh, 247.12. We'll call that crew the young guys, as we call the old man <laughs> and the young guys. So, uh, Seventh, uh, B.J. Wilkins with Bull Ride at 232.31. Eighth was Mark Miller. Tip our hats to Mr. Mark. Being one hell of a sponsor for the event. Uh, with the Mighty Mouse at 215.20, as they all are. And ninth, Corey Eberhardt with the Gold Edition at 95.59. And Rick Halk with Little Stinker, Vern Zerby with C Unit, and Austin Martin with Floor Sweepings. We're all scratches, I guess. So. Okay. Then we went into the 7,800 pound modified. Um, ten, nine tractors on hand. Eight plus one is nine, people, in case you didn't know. Uh, <laughs> Joe, P <laughs> Joe 
<laughs> You're an I'm accountant. Sure Come why. on. I'm not sure why that took me so long to process. <laughs> uh, Joe Perry took the win with two psychotic going 255.63. Right behind him at 255.57, so 0. Ah. 0.04 of a foot, was Rod Harnett with the Agitator. Third place, Nelson Egolf with the Tinker Toy going 246.91. Fourth place went to Amber Blizzard with the Unaffordable at 240.37. Fifth place went to Kiersey Robinson with the Phony 2 at 239.98. Sixth place went to Lucas Hillman with Night Train at 236.94. Seventh, Jamie Curley with 100 Proof going 236.08. And Brian Field with 4 Play went 216.24 to round out the class. Uh, Don Haley with Track Fever unfortunately had a DQ. Uh, Don is infamous for some wild rides there at Keystone. Um, I don't know what happened, but apparently he went out of bounds with authority. Uh, we heard the announcers in the back while we were uh, getting everything ready for the finals. It said he didn't just jump out with one foot. He put both feet out. So oh, wow. I'm not oh, sure man. what that meant, <laughs> but it sounds like he had a pretty interesting ride. She was talking to him, just wouldn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, in defensive Duante above us here, or above you, number six would be Lucas Heilman. Mm-hmm. Wow. Not Hillman. Not Hillman. Okay. I didn't want to cut her off. Just being, I'm, just being just being fair. I'm just being fair. Actually, Dwayne yeah. was like, "Hey, hey, Schwank, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look, you want to see? You want to see the text message? <laughs> it's fine. I never uh, admitted to yes. knowing how to pronounce everybody's <laughs> name right. Oh my I did, lord! I some of them. Look Believe what Dwayne. Or... Look what Dwayne only... gets to read. Yeah. The only reason I know how to pronounce that name is because when we did the uh, classic shows. Um, the Heilmans were a polling team that had been pulling at the buck in the uh, early 70s and 80s. Uh, up next, we had the 8,000 Limited Pro 3.0 diesel trucks. First time for having the 3.0 class. And in first place, Greg Walker with Dreams Happen at a 245.98. And right on his tail, Matt Horse with Pushing the Limit two, with a 245.48. And when the truck came down the track, the announcer's like, and we might have a new first place. And I was like, <laughs> what? No way. But then we got a second, so that's fine. Third place, Mike Burton with Backwoods Evolution with a 243.89. Fourth, Kyle Spickerman on Old Jenny with a 242.21. He, uh, he was another one of those guys that worked. 22 hours a day for who knows how many days to get that truck together. And at the end of his run, he had oil all over the place and his turbo feed line blew off. So mm -hmm. they were able to repair that because uh, he made it back for the finals. In fifth, Adam Kincaid with the Hill Brothers truck with a 241.47. In sixth was Charlie Record uh, with Ain't Cheating Yet with a, uh, with a 241.18. I think he was the defending champ from last mm -hmm. year seventh uh Heimbox diesel uh with a 240 97 eighth griffin sullivan driving never satisfied with a 239 48 and ninth was billy mead uh driving older jenny with a 239 38 tenth was mike wilson or michael wilson uh, driving truck named Fred with a 238 39 and 11th was chuck dutter with a common hooker uh, and he had a 235.77, and 12th was Tom Birdie driving White Trucks Matter 2.0 with a 31.63. And I talked with him after the pull, and he said that he had no idea where his RPMs were at because he couldn't hear or under, uh, didn't, <laughs> didn't know what was going on. So I assume it might have been his first time pulling indoors. 7,700 pound light limited turbo flight number two for the finals. Okay, to go to the finals, taking the win, Steve Flint with the head case at 253.17. Remember that name? He just had a birthday. I think it was today. I wished him a happy birthday on Facebook. So, uh, second, Bradley Seal with Mother in Law's Nightmare at 252.53. You reading that message? And Robert, Robert, Rob, Robert's <laughs> harassing me. 
<laughs> I had to loosen the band there so that the thing stayed on. Okay. It was too tight. Third was Bob Martin with Total Chaos at 243.77. Fourth, Jason Cottle with the Cicada at 243.12. Uh, fifth was Cody Anderson at 241.45. Sixth, Logan Thomas with Pure Adrenaline. Uh, 238.68. And I believe that was best to show in the class. I believe and the so. The pictures yeah. I've seen of that tractor is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful, what beautiful paintwork on that tractor. Awesome. Uh, seventh, uh, Macy Kiskaden and her inaugural run at the Keystone Nationals with Stretch. Yeah, Stretch at 238. Point three four eighth is uh, Jason Weichel with the Unleashed at 236 feet even. Ninth was uh, Brittany LaBelle with the Wacky Time at 234.69. Tenth was, this is how I pronounce it, and I'm sure I'm wrong, Rob LaTourette. Okay. LaTourette. LaTourette. Well, he, when he answers, <laughs> this is, this is he doesn't say LaTourette to me. He says, this is Steve LaTourette. So, I don't know. I don't know. Hit and run with 226.81. I might be wrong. He can probably call me and let me know. That's incorrect, JR. <laughs> uh, anyway, 11th Peak Kingston with part time and pieces at 220.82. Uh, 12th was Stephen LaGrange with the Makes Sense tractor at 204.39. 13th, Chris Lutman with the Hokie Harvester at 197.14. 14th was Tabitha Samsel with the Hot Mess Express at 62.36. And Mike Kalonic, Kalonic, whatever, light him up, uh, was a scratch. And we're going to the finals, kids. Yes, we are going to the finals. Uh, we started off the finals, obviously, with our uh, driver introductions, which is always fun. Um, <laughs> you know, we thought the Frisbees were, were just a little too complicated for pullers to, to, to fly out. <laughs> Uh, so, so we got some nice little blue balls and, you know, we, we, we just got to work on the arm strength of some of our pullers people. Like it's, it's rough, you know? <laughs> so. Anyway, should I, should I, should I tell you the whole truth about it? Oh, if what's they would have had arms on them, they would have probably been professional <laughs> football players or baseball players, but they're tractor pullers <laughs> for a reason. Yeah. So, so it was, it was great. Um, it's always a huge hit. I love to see the kids running after it. Um, and, and for those that don't know, uh, we put all the pullers names and their classes on an object in years past. It was a Frisbee this year. It was a, uh, Keystone nationals, like, uh, it was almost like a ball pit ball, you know, like one of the soft little squishy ones. Um, and whoever catches that, uh, if the puller wins that is on the ball or Frisbee that you caught, uh, they get a prize package from uh, some of the sponsors. Um, and shout out to Bull Snot, the hat that Dwayne's wearing there. Um, that's actually something that a finals winner received. Um, Bull Snot stepped up their game this year. Uh, they really, last year they gave us uh, some products to hand out to all the winners, but this year everybody in the top three got something from Bull Snot. Um, so shout out to them for really stepping up their game as a sponsor. Um, with that being said, we'll get started here. The 10,000 pound hot stock invitational was the first class of the evening. Tanking the win was Dustin Reynolds with pulling teeth going 256.98. Second place, uh, John Foreman, and congratulations to him and his newly, uh, I don't know, new relationship status of fiance. Yes. Him and Ashley got engaged over the weekend at the Keystone Nationals, so congratulations to them, too. Uh, as John, she, I think as she put it, she said they, they both came home with hardware. <laughs> yeah, yeah, John had that on his Facebook, that they both came home with hardware, so... Uh, congratulations to both of them. Um, it's always something with second place at 251.41. Third place. Oh, look, she's watching. Uh, Chad Nesselrod was third place um, with recap this at 249.06. And as we had said earlier, Brad Kramer, unfortunately, uh, just let that white line get a hold of his tire. I don't know how that happens sometimes. Um, but good job to all four of those pullers. <clears throat> All right, coming up next, we had the finals of the 93 Super Farm. In first place was uh, Frank Payne driving uh, Pure Luck with a 234.23. Mm -hmm. 
In second place was Shane McFarland with Rutten, Rutten Buck, the Rutten Buck, uh, with a 230.72. And in third place was Matt Conrad uh, driving Haywire with a 226.40. And those were that's it for the ninety three hundred super boy, warm. Am I ever excited to announce this eight thousand pound dual fuel mm -hmm. class man? Ah my buddy. Kevin Windsor. Man, after last year went from complete disaster to twenty twenty four Keystone Nationals champion with six shooter, two thirty nine point nine nine. Second was Henry Everman with forced decision at 233.24. Third, Lance Meisick with high hopes, 233.03. And fourth was David Everman with overruled, 224.43. And I'll tell you, distances are pretty close there. Not yep. too bad. Not too bad. What else I do you see? You know what else I see there? The distances. All, all alcohol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all over alcohol burners, so yeah. unfortunately... Bradish had problems, uh, so that's I was I was told before that class went into their qualifying round that there was six tractors in the class that either had uh, freshened up engines or new engines or were new or had some mm -hmm. kind of. They were all uh, had their fingers crossed, and I talked with Lance Meisick for a little bit, and he was uh, <laughs> he was fairly nervous going into this. He wasn't <laughs> sure. He was just hoping that everything. Uh, everything was going to work properly because he said he had it ready for Louisville and he didn't get selected for the invitational. And so it was sitting there and he couldn't keep his hands off. He would think of something and go look at it. Finally, he decided he had to load it in the trailer so he would uh, quit messing with it. That's not good. Yeah. But that's good. awesome that Kevin got it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We're very, very happy for Kevin. And there's another diesel that would have made the finals, but they found brass in the filter. Yep, that's time to investigate <laughs> for sure. That's that's a shame. But anyway, we're up now to 4,500 small block four by four. Yep, four of them in the finals uh, for Saturday night. Austin Stoner taking the win, 252.93. Keystone Nationals is definitely Austin's track. Um, I forget yeah. how many times they say that he had won. Um, four or four. He, he's Three got... Four. Thanks. Quite a few wins under his belt there at uh, with the small block truck with Analyze This. Uh, second place right behind him, Tyler Shives with the bootlegger at 252.18. Third place went to Ryan Varner with the Mountain Maniac at 248.11. And rounding out the class was Derek Dice with the Mopar Magic 2 going 243.30. Dwayne was saved. <laughs> How was that? You were saved. You didn't have to read that class again. <laughs> uh, all right coming up next uh in the finals was the 8500 light pro stock and in first place jeff michelocci and demented with the 254 90. uh second place was matt smith driving fast forward with a 242 29. in third place cody Utt with the storm with a 239 89 in fourth matt dirksen on uh driving on chain with a 238 93 and in fifth place, Mark Smith uh, driving faster forward with a 208.62. And when we were staging for the next class, Cody apparently was the first hook and dropped or the sled got reset and he had to come back. And they were trying to air it out the best they could to get heat out of it. But I think uh, he hurt his engine um, then on the final run because I – it took a little while till we got up because they were doing something. Yep. He, he had a lot of fire. I'm not sure if it was <clears> that <throat> or if an oil line came loose or what, but there was a lot of smoke. <laughs> so wow. I'm, I'm going to say it, it almost had to be an oil line coming off with as much smoke and fire as they had. Yeah. I've um, seen, seen I, pictures of it on fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, I think, yeah, I was still out there. I, I wasn't just paying attention. I don't know. We'll, we'll just call that. <laughs> you were getting all fired up for the next class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, just going to oh, say, I... Five Oak Fab was well represented this weekend. They definitely were. And I yeah. tell you what, it was uh, it was 
quite an awesome weekend to have somebody that knows a little bit about it lending their expertise. 8,000 pound limited pro 3 0 diesel trucks. The finals. Four there. And I got a guy over there who's just ready to bust at the seams right beside <laughs> me. Over here. You think Taking so? the win. First time champion at the Keystone Nationals. Matt Horst with the pushing the limit dodge at 240.17. Dwayne, I congratulate you and Matt both. Job well done. Uh, second, Greg Walker with Dreams Happen at 234.09. Third, Mike Burton with Backwoods Evolution at 231.89. And rounding out the finals, Kyle Spickerman with the old Jenny at 227.27. And I will say all four trucks had just as well of any... Oh, my goodness, Kevin. Kevin not burned three pistons, water injection pump broke. Ouch. That's not, not good. good. That's yeah, not that'll good. do it. Yeah, but anyway, congratulations to the four there in the diesel truck class. Uh, looks like it's a, su a successful class for Keystone. and I look forward to mm -hmm. come back. I want to add something to this here is uh, John. I don't know anything more about him, but John was the tractor operator. And for the first time at Keystone with a truck, I think uh, we got to uh, move around or ride with him at least uh, two or three times. And... Uh, I'm telling you, one of the, yeah, they put a lot of time into making sure that all the vehicles get moved into place. And um, I was a little bit concerned that I had to do a lot of walking because we had no buggy or it was back and forth. And I got to ride the buddy seat every time. So that was quite nice. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I was I was up top watching with uh, Leroy Walker and Norm. And I, I'll give it to Matt, man. That truck did not quit. You know, like, you know, you get to the end of the run and you think, all right, he's going to spin out. Just truck did not quit. So kudos to you and Matt. Definitely an impressive run in the finals. Hopefully we can keep hanging on to runs like that for the rest of the season, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. It's my turn, right? Yeah. Uh, next, we went into the 7,800-pound modified. Um, taking the win Again, with authority. I'm getting all these big-time winners here. Uh, Rod Harnett with the Agitator going 240.96. Second place was Kirstie Robinson with the Phony 2 at 229.88. Third place, I uh, want to insert a story here. I did not realize this until Saturday morning. Uh, Ricky Blizzard was actually taken to the hospital on Thursday night after Keystone. Uh, he thought that he had a sore throat, strep throat, or something like that. Uh, yeah, not so much. He had something swollen there in the back of his throat. Uh, he was having trouble breathing. Um, good news is Ricky is out. Ricky is doing much better. He is home now. Um, but Amber actually pulled double duty on Saturday night in the finals because her and her dad's tractor both made it to the finals. Um, and she was able to get third place with Ricky Blizzard, uh, the barely affordable uh, with 227.88. So, uh, yeah, definitely going to keep Ricky and his Ricky and um, Shanda in our prayers. Um, I'm sure he's still healing at home. Uh, but congratulations to Amber pulling double duty uh, with both tractors in the final. Uh, fourth place, Nelson Egoff with the Tinker Toy going 227.01. Fifth place was Joe Perry with Two Psychotic at 225.69. Sixth was Amber Blizzard with Unaffordable at 225.44. Seventh place was Casey Wolf with the one too many at 22074. And eighth place was Ian Erker with the unstable going 208.48. All right. Um, up, up next, for the, we had the finals of the 8500 Mod Turbo. In first place, taking the win was Guy Gokenauer on stress test with a 255.16. And I would Sounds say. Good. Huh? A championship number three for him there. In a row? No. No. Good for him. Um, yes. In second place was Scott Kiskadden with bleeding. Did I say that wrong? Yeah. No, you did. All right. Kiskadden. Okay. All right. This is Kendra's class. I'm, I'm just it trying is. to remember. These are uh, my people. <laughs> uh, driving bleeding blue with uh, 251.64 in third place was Steve Beckley. Uh, on Up and Smoke with the 251.21. In fourth place was John Lilly driving Extreme Pressure with the 251.06. Oh, 
In fifth place, Jason Malott, Jason Yankee Malott, driving Dr. LZ at a, at a 250. And and number in sixth place was Joe Miller on Smoke and Joe with a 243.15. In seventh was Ray Belak on Raging Red with a 241.63. And in eighth place was DJ Boop uh, with High on the Hog. Uh, and he had a 239.70. Good deal. All right. Up next is 6200 modified 4x4 truck finals. And got the monkey office back. Championship winner, Justin Grace with just in time at 245.95. Good job, Justin. Second was Graham Young with the Renegade. That is a past, I believe, multi champion truck there at 244.92. Third was Will Hitchcock with Home Wrecker, 244.29. Fourth, Eddie Zedrick with Thunderbolt at 242.19. Fifth, RB Moeller with Black Sheep. 241.75. Six was Wayne Taft Scott the second with Tasmanian Terror 2. 239.58. Seventh, Dean Hitchcock with Grounds for Divorce at 235.46. And rounding out the finals, Chad Lamb with the Virginia Outlaw with ADQ. And again, I didn't see it. I don't know what happened. If he bounced, run, uh, lost weight, run out of bounds, whatever. So I, I don't know either. Unfortunate break. <clears throat> Next, we went into the 11,000-pound hot farm. Uh, taking the win, as we mentioned earlier, was Kenny Balker with the Rippin' Red 252.14. Congratulations to him for one heck of a weekend. Uh, second place, Tommy Eppert with the Snortin' Horse, Snortin Horse at 241.56. Mark Lawson, third place, uh, 241.14. And rounding out the class was Kenny Sandridge with Old Herman going 239.14. All right. Uh, up next was the 10,000 pound pro farm finals in first place. Ivan Hisong on the limestone binder with a 257.49. Uh, in second place was uh, Mark Colbertson on stitch with a 247.76. Third was Kendall Weaver on the Virginian with a 239.98. In fourth, Chris uh, Pangle Jr. Uh, driving all hooked up with a 237.91. And in fifth place was Anthony Hamrick on Beefy with a 233.52. Okay. Kendra, I'll tell you what, I, I've got the best of shows lined up here on my telephone. I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, go ahead and take us into the final class of the finals, of course. Yep. Last class of the evening, 10 tractors in the 7,700 pound light limited class, taking the win, sweeping the weekend with Steve Flint with the head case at 248.77. Second place, Logan Thomas with the Pure Adrenaline at 244.73. Third place was Bradley Seal with Mother-in-Law's Nightmare at 243.02. Fourth place went to Cody Anderson at 241.29. Uh, <clears throat> shout out to Cody. Uh, if anybody noticed during the driver's introduction, um, I say this in the nicest way, the dude was a scruffball. Um, it's because they did some major motor work in between the two sessions um, on his tractor in order for him to come back to the finals. So... Uh, good job to him for having a really good finish there in the finals and throwing in the work on the weekend to get there. Uh, fifth place was Bradley Wassler with the Whistling Red at 239.70. Sixth place was Ben Flaherty with Smoke and Red at 239.63. Um, and for I think we mentioned this last week, uh, Ben Flaherty was the one who had a uh, miniature version of his tractor um, made this week by Doug Deal. Um, Jeff Michalacci ended up getting that, uh, winning that, I'm sorry, Jeff's grandson <laughs> was the official winner of the little lawnmower. Um, and I hear there's some wheeling and dealing there between old man Flaherty and Jeff. So oh, I'm sure man. we'll know what happens there. Um, I think, I think Jeff has his eye on, uh, may, maybe letting Pat Flaherty have it, but, uh, maybe getting Doug to build another one. So we'll see what ends up happening there. Um, fifth, uh, where were we? Seventh place, Dayton Custer with Operation Blue at 237.98. Eighth place, Bob Martin with Total Chaos at 237.96. Ninth place was Adam Ritchie with the Paps Blue Ribbon at 232.16. And tenth place was Dave Simcock with Lucifer going 231.33. 
And like I said, that was a wrap when Keystone Nationals ended the evening. Uh, they announced the distance of Dayton Custer at 11.59 p.m. Uh, so way to go, Keystone Committee. Um, there was a lot of grief after last year's pool. Um, there was a lot of grief when everybody said, this is how we're going to fix it. And kudos to the Keystone Committee for staying strong and achieving their goal. Um, I think that this year's finals was one of the best that we've had. Um, it ran smoothly. Um, yeah, not sure what more could have gone right. Um, I think we just about started on time. I know the driver's introductions got started a little bit late. Um, but yeah, I think it was a good, good night. The show ran quick. Um, yeah, of course we heard our complaints. We always do. In case nobody knew this, the registration trailer is the uh, is the complaint department. Um, unfortunately, we did have some negative feedback on the Keystone page, and all I'll have to say is that is uh, don't forget that the person who was running the social media page and the people who are answering those messages not only do they have no control over ninety nine percent of the situations. But not a single person on that Keystone committee wants anything to go wrong. And saying some really mean, nasty things helps nothing. It does not add anything. And it's a darn shame that people resort to just all out nasty rudeness when something bad is happening and you're adding nothing to the situation. Trust me, every pool has it. <laughs> and that's yeah, all I, I agree. I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Nobody on that committee, nobody there volunteering wants anything. Doesn't want the show to run smoothly. And we are all doing our very level best and being negative, being just being mean doesn't help the situation. Nope. That's all I, I have a lot of I have a lot of respect for everybody that runs that show and volunteers and does that because it is not an easy job. They bend over backwards to take care of all the things that have to be done, and they don't even get to watch the show for the most part. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Toby. Um, he's he's the guy down in the hot pits. He's a Keystone committee member. I think this year, because of Guy obviously pulling, he he watches a little bit of the Monturbo class, but he doesn't see a single vehicle go down the track all weekend long. Banish to the side building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And and luckily this year it was warm, but some years, man, it is yeah. so cold down there in that hot pit. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Before okay, we I've go, got, uh, I've got the list. Let me let me get through this list of best mm -hmm. of show, and then we're going to have to get this wrapped up. Uh, looks like I believe Big Block Mini, uh, uh, the Pete Yarrington with the Copperhead was your best of show winner. Small Block Mini is the Bottle Baby of Larry Baden. Uh, Tyler Shives with Bootlegger, Small Block Four Before. These are best of shows again. Adam D as a Whiskey Business Light Pro. Recap this, Chad Nuzzlerot. And that's going to be, I believe, is he hot stock class, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. The Untamed, uh, John Deere, the Super Farm of the McFarlands. Uh, the Unaffordable Modified of the Blizzards, Amber Blizzard, the driver. And the Adrenaline Light Limited Turbo is a beautiful tractor. I don't know the name of that driver. I apologize. Logan Thomas. Logan Thomas. How could I forget that name, right? <laughs> Uh, high hopes, Lance Mysick. Congratulations. And the dual fuel super stock class. And in the my turbo was the uh, what is that? It's the case. I can't think of their names either. I apologize. Under pressure. Uh, John Lilly. John Extreme Lilly. pressure. Extreme pressure, yes. Keep me straight, Kendra. <laughs> See what happens when I take a year off. <laughs> uh, wow, look at this guy. Look at this guy, the shed shaker. Wow, Brian Morrison. Look at that. That's a clean tractor. Doesn't they do a good job keeping that tractor clean? Modified four by four, Mr. Troy Nails. 
And Diesel Trucks, the Hill Brothers, that would be Adam, Adam Kincaid. Adam Kincaid, correct. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, oh boy, that's a hard hard one to read. Rip and Red, Rip and Red. Okay. That's a hot farm, correct? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. okay. Kenny Balker. Yeah. Kenny Balker. And that's all I have. That was the entire lineup for the best of show. That's what I got pictures for anyway that were sent to me. So congratulations. Beautiful vehicles. So after it was all over, I was standing in the <clears throat> lower section by where normally where you have your thing there. And uh, Matt's little nephew ended up with the blue ball from Matt's truck. And so his dad said something about they have to figure out where to go to get their door prize or whatever. They were giving away stuff for uh, the winners if you had the ball with the driver's name on it. And the kid was all worried. He didn't want to hand the blue ball over to the winner because he was afraid he was going to lose the ball. He was more concerned about that blue ball than the door prize. So I thought that was kind of funny. I had to ask um, who was running that. Uh, I'm having a brain fart now. Kendra. What was the your, tractor? Your friend sitting next to you there at the computer. Um, Destiny? No, the other one. The one that does all the I did that song. Jess, no, Jess. I had to ask Jess to make sure she wasn't going to keep the ball because the poor kid was all he was. He didn't want to let me have it. Yeah, Jess. Anyway. Jess handed out a lot of the prizes. So yeah, she took some pictures. So I assume sometime in the future, uh, those pictures will come onto social media or somewhere. Yep. Good deal. Yeah. Yep. She's been yeah. slowly and uh, slowly but surely adding everything there for social media. I think she's been posting about two or three posts today. So. Cool. There's another pool this weekend there, this Friday and Saturday. And I'm yep. trying to send the link over to somebody real quick. They can fill us in real quick before we wrap things up. If she answers. <laughs> Thank like you, Robert. Probably. Yeah, that. We're, we're on the hunt to move our trailer because we feel like, you know, they put baby in the corner and <laughs> we don't get to see a lot. <laughs> so we're hoping next year we can find a little bit better parking spot. But uh, yeah, me, Destiny and Deb uh, work pretty hard there in the registration trailer. Um, it is it, it is a thankless job, unfortunately. Uh, but I will say a lot of people do come up and express their thanks and their gratitude um, and we are definitely appreciative of it. Uh, this year, some years we get lots of food and lots of beverages. And I think people forgot about us this year. So do better next year, people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, no, we, we have a good time there in the trailer. Uh, we The three of us work pretty well and got down pat. Um, Saturday morning through the evening session are usually our busiest <laughs> time getting everything turned around. Uh, for the finals, but we have fun doing it. So it's all that matters. That's right. Okay. Real quick. Uh, this, this, uh, March 22nd and 23rd, uh, at the, uh, Pennsylvania farm show complex is the mid Atlantic antique tractor super pool. Uh, registration will start at 6 AM. Pulling starts at 8 AM. Come pull with the best on the East Coast. It's $35 per hook, $50 jackpot class. No refunds on any class set to register. Four hooks per day plus one special hook is allowed. $20 membership, insurance, and parking fee is one package there. Must be paid. That's a farm show complex rule, not the pools rule. So, And there again, Friday and Saturday, it's uh, loaded up. Bray Kaufman or Don Hilkert. Uh, there's a flyer online. Um, I don't want to give the phone numbers out here, but uh, there is a flyer online. I'll be sharing it as well on my social media pages, uh, probably starting tomorrow. Uh, I hear it's a great pull. They run two tracks. So uh, if you want some more tractor pull in action, Mid-Atlantic Antique Tractor Pull. This super pull. I'm sorry. Antique Tractor Super Pull. There we go. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I was working in Reading today, and I seen a truck and trailer go by with tractors on it, and I was kind of curious if they might be headed to Harrisburg. Could be. Uh, you know, Robert, the T-shirt trailer was very close to the registration trailer. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Could have served us some. <laughs> you know what? They they almost got they almost got canned before they got started on Thursday night. They had food out and security or somebody from the operation came over and uh, told them they were going to kick them out for selling food. <laughs> <laughs> So they politely moved their food out around the corner so nobody could see it. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just got some more information. I'm sorry to cut you off uh, real quick fine. here. Jackpot classes is $50 per class. It's a 50% payback for the top three. Again, no refunds on anybody that has already registered for the classes before they start. Uh, Friday's classes, there's no average on weight classes, no payback. In classes with less than five entries, which I'm sure they'll more than meet the quota. Uh, they got a three and a half mile per hour, 4250, 5250, and a 6250. Again, these are jackpot classes. Uh, the four mile per hour, 4250, and 5250. Six mile per hour, 4750, 6250, 7250. Eight mile per hour, 6250. And a 15 mile per hour, 5250. We ain't done. Then we got Saturday. <laughs> Again, no average on weight classes, no payback in classes, less than five entries. And what I just read above is going to run again, three and a half mile per hour, 37.50. That's a little different. I'm sorry. 37.50, 47.50, 67.50, Four mile per hour is 37.50, 47.50, 62.50, a six mile per hour, 62, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 52.50, and 67.50, eight mile per hour, 57.50. And 67.50 and 15 mile per hour, uh, 57.50. And these are $50 per class, 50% payback for the top three. And that's the Mid Atlantic Antique Tractor Super Bowl. Okay, I'm sorry, Dwayne. Go ahead. Uh, I don't even remember what was on my. Somebody <laughs> texted me and I had a brain fart. I think I. Oh. <laughs> I think I was done. I was just talking about the food at the uh, thing. It all turned out fine then. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Nicole Marshall, you see there, I had a post here. I'll be there. She is uh, doing, I guess I'm going to assume, a lot of the registration duties for the Antique Tractor Super Bowl at Harrisburg. So we got a live stream complaint, Kendra. We are aware that there was issues Harold with the live Clark. stream. He's going to complain anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was the first year for this live stream company. We definitely learned some things. Um, and I would hope that everybody could see the improvement of the live stream going into Saturday night's finals. <clears throat> um, you cannot practice a live stream as much as everybody thinks they can you cannot practice a live stream. Um, and again, just please be kind. Please know that everybody there was doing their best. It wasn't like when the live stream went down, everybody sat there and twiddled their thumbs. Everybody was working hard and diligently to get it back up and running. And everybody apologizes. Like I said earlier, nobody wanted that to happen. And we feel bad that it happened. Um, it was out of our control. Yeah. Uh, but but says all they got was the uh, super stock class. So that's the only thing I saw Friday night. But again, that could be local internet problems too. Yeah. Um, we, we had the live stream running there at the pool. We know that it went down during the small block finals. Um, we're, we're not really sure what happened, but I do believe that um, you can now watch the playback. Um, so you can go back in and watch the two classes that were missed. Um, I know that there was people complaining about Thursday night finals or Thursday night prelim um, that they missed stuff. Um, I, I sat right here at this computer and watched it all night long. Jessica, um, that a thing. Yeah. Jessica, yeah. Dara, the Thursday and Friday the live stream issues were a platform issue outage. Saturday morning was a Comcast outage, nothing internal, and unfortunately, nothing could be done. There you go. You're at the mercy of the cable company. Uh, real quick, I have a question here. Uh, Ray Kaufman, I, I, see, I know you're watching. Nicole, um, what was the question here? Hold on real quick. 
You all know what time they will be letting us in the building tomorrow for your pool. Next question. Here it is. Anyway, I have a shout out to do a while. I have to do a shout out for uh, the photographer, the main photographer there in the building. Adam Drop. A Adam and his wife. And uh, I have to say that uh, I was a little bit concerned with that on the track picture because as soon as it was over, I wanted I wanted to make sure that I didn't have my tongue hanging out or no boogers <laughs> or nothing dumb. And we actually looked pretty good. Didn't look too weird on the picture. So he did an excellent job. Excellent job. All the pictures uh, are still coming. I get, uh, did they all come out already, or I wasn't paying attention? <laughs> Not, I it, saw it will be coming Thursday too. and Saturday morning. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and to answer your yeah. question, uh, Dave Simcock, 1 p.m. Thursday. Okay, he got it. Okay. We're all, we're all settled there then. <laughs> Fast. Okay. That's all I have. It's late. It's 9.35. I'm I'm ready for some rest. So, Bush. how do I like to stand for one day? <laughs> so. so, again, it was Closing a good, ex good, good experience. Had a really good experience. I would uh, definitely, uh, definitely uh, not complaining about anything. They worked their butts off to get it done, and they deserve some rest this week. Yeah, I know a lot of us spent a lot of time on Sunday on the couch. <laughs> there one day. Huh? I said you were only there one day. No, I wasn't. I was there Friday evening. Oh, was you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You said I thought you said you wouldn't be there on Saturday. No, I got there around you know, I'm gonna pick on you about it. Six thirty on Saturday or Friday night. Right. This guy was running on fumes too. I think I had like four hours of sleep three nights in a row. <laughs> Wish I could have been there to join you. Believe me. Wish I was there, but didn't happen this year. Anyway. Yep. We appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, it's a pretty good attendance, I think, here. We're pretty good there. So uh, like, subscribe, share, hit that thumbs up button for Club Kendra. Keeps them happy. <laughs> and, uh, uh, there, there. Look at Adam's comment. Adam. Yep, all the photos, photos are posted on the website. Okay. Good deal. Very good, Adam. Thank you. That's a pretty quick turnaround. Good job, Adam. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Much needed, and I'm sure they'll be taking what they need for the uh, for the program for next year. Mm -hmm. And it is on my list to be there next year. So. Good deal. Look out, man. Did you, get, did you get my text message on Thursday night that you didn't reply to? <laughs> I sent you a picture of the stage, an empty stage, saying they oh, saved the spot for about, you. <laughs> you were talking to Adam. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no, sorry. I was talking to you. Sorry. Yeah. It was it was tough to look at that stage and not see my tripod and cameras. Yeah, Eat. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, no, no. I, I had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Okay, if you all are done, I'm going to go ahead and I have get this thing add. wrapped up. And we appreciate everybody watching. Uh, uh, we might, I got a couple shows lined up. Uh, I know Chase Steinman, we're going to get Chase on here and probably do a, a live uh, podcast with him. And uh, the old guys are coming back too for a nostalgia show. So we're working on getting. Three possibly, yeah, at least three of them, at least two, possibly three of them coming in. So we'll let you know more. Just keep an eye out for the notifications. Um, I don't know which one will be next week. It'll be one of the two, probably. But we're definitely going to get Chase on here, too. He's young man's got a lot to say, so we're going to let him talk. But, uh, with that said, we appreciate you tuning in tonight. And uh, chat was pretty busy there for a while. We appreciate that. And uh, we'll uh, we'll be back next Wednesday. Barring any family issues, my goodness, man, it's, it's been crazy around here. So, uh, not my immediate family, but uh, family within family here. So, but anyway, thanks for watching. We'll be back next Wednesday. Dwayne, congratulations to you and Matt. Congratulations to all the Keystone champions, the winners. Congratulations for Club Kendra getting up there for two days mm -hmm. at the Keystone Nationals. 
So you guys we'll hang see a day up. and a half. A day and a half. Day and a half. Okay. Well, I was going to give you credit for two. So <laughs> we'll uh, you two hang hang on. I'll be backstage with you in just a minute. Rest of you. Hopefully, we'll see you next Wednesday at eight p.m. Thank you. Bye.